African Christianity was introduced by English missions after the occupation of Ceylon when the British ousted Dutch forces in the early 19th century. Many churches were built in Colombo and other parts of the country, while St. Peter's Church in Fort was the first Anglican church, it was a converted Dutch dwelling. The Church Missionary Society, or CMS, started their work in Ceylon only in 1850 under a new system of management. The objective was to spread their teachings to villages rather than towns. However, Reverend George Petit, the secretary to the Central Committee, favoured the construction of a church in Colombo. His ethos was to have a union of the races. In search of a suitable place to site the church, it was built on the land adjoining the Golface Esplanade. The foundation stone was laid on the 21st of January 1853 by the Bishop of Colombo, the Right Reverend Chapman. Many a splendid game of cricket was played at the site with the background of the Goldface Esplanade and the church clearly visible in the periphery. In 1898, disaster struck and part of the wall of the old church collapsed. This was due to heavy rains taking its toll on the kabuk used to build the walls. In 1898, the church was redesigned by architect W.A. Turnstall and the foundation stone laid by Reverend R.S. Copplestone. On the 18th of March, 1899, the new church was opened just 300 metres from the Goldface Esplanade. The Christ Church at Goldface was originally known as the CMS Cathedral. It was a centre of evangelical worship in Colombo with revered and dignified services serving the community of Slave Island and Colpiti. During World War II, the church was a haven for the thousands of British soldiers, airmen, seamen, along with Allied troops from New Zealand, Canada, Africa, Australia and America. The Bishop of Colombo had advised the vicar to serve the spiritual needs of the stationed servicemen. Today, an emblem honouring the lives of British Commonwealth forces who laid their lives down in two world wars was placed in the church in 1955. There is also a flag of England still preserved, which was used in services by the Royal Army almost 100 years ago. The Christchurch Goldface today stands magnificently defiant against the backdrop of giant concrete skyscrapers encroaching from all directions. It's currently located between the Victoria Masonic Temple on the north side and the Automobile Association on the south side while facing the Taj Samudra Hotel. The nave axis of the church follows an east-west direction, as with traditional English churches. The Gothic style of the church originally had two pinnacles, but were later removed during the installation of the Belfry Tower. The entrance to the church is through the porch, which has a high-pitched gabled roof, a typical style of English village churches. The nave has two rows of wooden pews which lead you to the ornate raised pulpit on the left. The font too is on a side at the rear of the church on a slightly elevated stage. The lectern is a beautiful work of brass craftsmanship embellished by a flying eagle on the top. A set of unusual octagonal shaped columns run through the length of the church. 
The chancel leads to the sanctuary, with the altar as a focal point. Behind the altar is a table placed at a higher level with the cross, candlesticks and other Eucharistic ornaments. The clergy and choir vestries are on the south and north sides respectively. The mosaics on the floor of the Christchurch nave, passage, chancel and sanctuary have different designs and different shades created through ceramic tile. The stained glass windows are a set of brilliant works of art placed on the east and west walls. The east window, which meets the visitor's eye when entering the church, vividly depicts a biblical story, while at the centre is the figure of Christ as king, flanked by the angels Gabriel and Michael. The figure of John the Baptist is at the bottom with a bishop and others. The stained glass was produced in Britain and assembled here and is an awe-inspiring work of art. The rose window on the west is supposed to be one of the most beautiful windows you can find in the island. Varied colours with subtle shades and hues all embellish the circular-shaped portal with eight radiating bars ending in traceries. The church has conducted trilingual services over the years by having two vicars, but now Christchurch Golface has been brought under the charge of one vicar, Reverend Father Charles Nyanaya, who conducts services in all three languages with an assistant curate. The design has been largely unaltered for almost 30 years. The addition of a belfry tower built between 1918 and 1919 gives the current church architecture its distinct look. The perpendicular Gothic style tower has emulated the look of the beautiful Somerset Towers in England. The 16.3 metre tall structure is topped with pinnacles and buttresses. A prayer room was opened in 2019, which is located within the Belfry Tower. The prayer room, a designated place with the sole intention of connecting with God through prayer, can be used individually, for a family, or within the church body. The bell, weighing over a metric ton, was donated by Mrs. Mitchell in memory of her husband and has his name inscribed. The church has not been without its trials. Reverend Henry Whitley met an untimely death when a part of the construction of a wall fell on him in 1860. In 1962, a part of the property was taken over by the government and was lost to a school. The church also lost a part of the land in 1972 to the road expansion known as Duplication Road running east of the church. A section of land was then sold to the banking conglomerate Hatton National Bank in 1981. It is an interesting fact that three landmarks in Colombo bear the same date of construction. The year of 1853 bears significance for all three locations. While the first two, the Colombo Clock Tower and the Goldface Esplanade Boardwalk were both built by the British governor of the time, Henry Ward. The third is the Christchurch Goldface, which has endured over one and a half centuries of challenges, change and development. Today, this gorgeous Gothic-inspired church architecture is dwarfed by the huge construction projects surrounding it from all directions. Though these developments move ever upwards, the church remains steadfast as a beacon for its parish and followers and continues to strive to bring about the union of the races through its multilingual services.